Jamie, thanks for joining uh, me in this uh, collaboration brainstorm about homesteading life. Welcome. Yeah, of course. Thank you. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you reaching out. I, I love what you're doing. I think, you know, our audience really loves it too. So I'm excited to dive in and learn more about it. Yeah. So Jamie, I came across your site actually from one of my students. They recommended me. They, they said, oh, I, I, I woke up late. I was on a course with uh, Jamie and the Off Grid T uh, Dream. And I'm like, okay, so let's check it out. If my students are on your courses, I'm, I, I want to know from a point like, you know, what's going on in the permaculture field. So, um, yeah, I just wonder how did you, how did it start in a nutshell? Yeah, um, I mean, it really, I think for a lot of people, it starts kind of internally or mentally, emotionally, etc, where uh, we just saw a lot of issues in society in general, a lot of things that could be done a lot better, um, a better way of life, you know, we, we had my brother and I had both gone through some pretty severe um, mental health uh, battles, and we didn't feel supported in that by the general healthcare system, as a lot of people don't. Um, we also, you know, were like I worked corporate for a while, which was super stressful. And, you know, I vowed I just never wanted to do that again and whatnot. And, you know, I've known that I wanted to do it since probably the age of 13, but uh, I, I didn't have the money to do it. So that was always kind of my my mindset. So I was like, okay, what do I do? I started getting jobs. Um, I, st I work, you know, two, three jobs at a time. I would be starting different businesses on the side to try to make enough money to, you know, buy land and be able to, to create a homestead and the lifestyle that I wanted. Um, but I, so I did that for wow, probably like 10 to 15 years, just trying to, uh, to, to figure that out. And then finally, I just went straight at it. I just said, you know, during COVID, I lost my livelihood. Uh, I had to bankrupt my business. Um, you know, I, I I left. I was forced out of my job and whatnot. So I was kind of sitting there. I was in debt because I overextended myself for my previous venture. Um, so, yeah, I was just sitting there. Didn't know how I was going to pay for my rent or my food the next two weeks. And I just said, okay it's time to just go straight at it. Um, and, and that's exactly what we did. And funny enough, going straight at it, even though we're starting with no money, uh, was the only way that it ever worked, even though for the past 10, 15 years, I was trying to make it work through all these roundabout ways. So there, mm -hmm. I think there's really something to be said for just moving in the direction that you really want to go. Um, and yeah, so we ended up, uh, we, we've used a bunch of crew creative financing methods to be able to, to pull it off. Um, so, you know, that we went and we got a mortgage partner who helped put a down payment on the land and co-sign for the mortgage because my credit was wrecked and, and whatnot. And, um, and then we did some crowdfunding. We got overflown with donations uh, that we never even asked for. People were just super excited to be a part of something like this, which was really amazing. So a lot of that was in like building materials you know, we got a sauna, we got a golf cart, we got a teepee, we got some uh, wall tents and bell tents and stuff for Airbnb stays. We got all, most of our kitchen appliances. Uh, we got lots and lots of support from people in the community, which is really, really amazing. Um, and then, uh, and then from there, we once you like once you're into the land, there's so many ways to cash flow it to generate income on it. Just uh, an abundant amount of ways uh, with with yeah. rural land. Um, so yeah, we. We started to host retreats and um, and do some Airbnb stuff, and that you know that took off. Within about seven months, we were doing about thirty thousand dollars a month from that, uh, from yeah retreats and events and uh, and some Airbnb stuff, and then we reinvested all of that um, into it to start to build out the permaculture farm and and things like that. So uh, we really help with the strategy behind that. So for example, you know. People kind of misallocate their finances and their resources and their time a lot of it, a lot of the time. So the biggest points to failure tend to be uh, the finances, the financial side, as well as the human factors, which would mean like getting the right people to help you to, to do it. So, uh, you know, a, a quick example of that is like even just how to find land that suits that suits people um, is a lot of people don't know how to do that. Or, you know, let's say you have a budget and you want to put up a yurt um, to, uh, to, you know, bring some to generate some income on the land to pay for the whole build out and whatnot. Well, a year costs $30,000 
and makes you 200 bucks a night when you could just buy a bell tent for $3,000 and make 200 bucks a night, the same amount for one tenth of the price. So it's a lot of that strategy and stuff that we help people to really hone in on what they want and then help them actually get there and create a plan and then start executing that plan. Yeah. Wow. I really like that because, um, back in 2009, I was like, Hey, I've had enough of the city. I'm going to go and, you know, do the life on the land. So I bought a piece of land with my ex-wife and my son, and it was beautiful. It was six and a half hectares next to indigenous forest. Amazing. And I happened to, you know, pay it off in a year which was really nice. So I had no stopping, nothing that could stop me in uh, fulfilling this dream of a permaculture training center school. Um, I had 10 geodesic domes with covers because I was running an event decor business. And uh, I, I even brought in Pacific Domes um, uh, engineer to help me in, uh, train a tarp company that made the tarps for trailers to make your Pacific Dome geodesic covers. And I had to press, everything was like I had it all. And I stuffed it up because of these very things that you speak of, because it was like, dig a dam that didn't hold water, then uh, started building a sandbag house and uh, all these experiments, which I'd like to share my little presentation with you. Maybe, um, you know, now is a good time. But basically, I, I b before I knew it, I was <laughs> bankrupt. And when you run out of cash, like really run out of cash, um, then, you know, you you run back to the city. Um, so that's what uh, that's what uh, happened to me. And, uh, this, and we had a robbery on the land because South Africa is a very dangerous uh, place. So, you know, yeah. So the, some of these things went considered because when we thought that we're going to move onto the land, it's going to be heaven on earth and it's going to solve all our problems. And um, and I'd like to also touch on a little bit of your men mental things because that, that's what actually gave in for me. Uh, I mentally wasn't ready for it. And uh, yeah, but maybe just fly through a little bit. So I'm like an inventor, design various things from food growing machines to flying objects. That's my event business, uh, decorated events for 16 years. Um, yeah, uh, using spandex. Wow. So that's where the curves came from. Very cool for 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 glamping and, uh, you know, events and, and on the land as well. There's a, a tent, tenting space on the right. So then, yeah, I started getting into homes. Obviously, I learned about Buckminster Fuller. In 2007, went to FIP. Uh, ferro cement I'll, I'll share with you now that's on my land that's that's the permaculture school those are the dome covers like wow. everything I, I had a boiler that would could boil water for five showers at the same time in the dome um it went to cal earth learned the obviously the super adobe method went to um ferro cement construction in mexico um oh that's mike reynolds by the way from earthship uh biotechture yeah um and uh, brought it back and started experimenting. So obviously start small with a washing machine, a, a water tank, uh, a washing machine covered and a ferro cement seashell roof. So, you know, how do I get these shapes into um, more permanent? That's my garden on the land, which I learned about sacred geometry cannot be applied um, like a mandala garden cannot be applied on a slope because a slope you have to consider contour lines. So my bottom... Mm -hmm. So it's concentric circles, garden. So the bottom beds caught the water and the top beds diverted the water so they dried up. You know, I was more into the prepper mindset, digging geodesic spheres underground <laughs> with dream catchers so my family could sit and if the earth started to move, we could, you know, get away, uh, you know, be safe. But yeah, so all this prepper mindset is obviously gone. Nothing happened. Um, just drawing and building drawing and building drawing and building has been my strategy uh, that's in johannesburg very cool little glamping pod acre dome uh, went up in six days so really fast to wow. completion yeah, yeah those are really fast. fast yeah the blocks are one by one foot 
So if you have them made and you have the, the, the form works and the form works are reusable, like for the arches, for the door and the window, then, oh man, it goes up really fast. And then combining it with uh, Super Adobe, um, ran a couple of workshops throughout the years. Wow, in various that's beautiful. Parts. Yeah, yeah, various parts of the world and continue to, to design continue to design and in my decor business um i prototyped like what would happen if you remove a part of the dome you know uh, so to 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 to, um, to make a geodesic dome would it stand and i realized of course it wouldn't stand you need extra support beams so and basically now developing a home for cold climate which is a glorified earthship and the main difference is that the heat that the earthship dumps out into the atmosphere I want to take some of that heat and channel it into the berm through a set of pipes, which I'll show you, and basically passively uh, pull it out through a solar tube and warming this mass behind the, um, you know, the, the burial, the burial behind the home, yeah? So right. <clears throat> made some models, um, you know, which obviously taught me that, hey, certain shapes won't work. Models are very cool, highly recommend if you're, if you're any of your <clears throat> subscribers want to like design a home to actually make a to scale clay model um, and to see how it will hold out and then and, and they'll make changes because I've gone through loads of designs over the years and, um, uh, and uh, you know, realizing that um, eventually, you know, realizing that certain things don't work as, <laughs> as they do on a paper in real life, but Eventually, you 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 know you get the, to draw this on the ground and you start uh, digging, um, which is really fun. Uh, in mos when mosquitoes are biting you, so developing this, <laughs> yeah, a lot. Developing these tubes that are gonna heat, so uh, blow up the um, plastic. I'm still prototyping. Blow up the plastic chute, attach it to the Super Adobe Snake, and put some mesh, and then hopper hop with a hopper gun spray to create my own channels that can take the heat. Obviously, I need to use, have pipes that can move air. So that's in Brazil a year ago, uh, uh, developed a sacred geometrical home. Um, they they finished it now. So that, that's basically what, where I'm going. I'm developing this really cool uh, home that, uh, in essence, takes the heat from the greenhouse and channels it um, into, um, into the berm underneath the floor here around the septic and into the berm so it's obviously all buried behind and then the solar tubes these two solar tubes take it passively out sucking it out because they're very hot it's like a torch uh like a torch uh, mirror behind and polycarbonate in the front and black uh, one foot diameter pipe six meters tall so creating a bit of suction but you know i'm obviously not going to go into too much detail right now i just want to that's the home complete um what it would look like and i'm building a prototype this year that's one of my previous designs um using uh vaults vaults are very cool because you know do domes are great but not everybody's uh, ready for domes because uh you know furniture and like yeah you know, not domes are not for everyone and not for every room in the house like maybe artistic space sure but an office, maybe not, you know. So what I love about vaults is that they um, they can be poured in a day using this formwork, which I learned at Cal Earth as well. Very cool re removable formwork. Removable and reusable is key here because we're talking about land development and creating something that can, you know, we can multiply these things. So one formwork, you pour a roof in a day using only wow. one mesh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That if you saw the so ferro cement seashell. Faster than I would have ever expected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once you, you once you uh, uh, put the mesh on and the formwork, two people can pour this mix, uh, provided you've got a cement mixer, obviously. But yeah, that pours in a day. You have to pour it in a day so you don't have any uh, cracks and stuff. Um, but so where I'm going... Sorry. So you're building you're building these, and I mean, so far the timelines I think are really amazing, and I think a lot of people, I think a lot of people look at at, at amazing architecture like this um, and natural building, and a common conception is that they take a really long time. Uh, so I think that that's really amazing. I'm also curious around the cost on on some of these things. Um. 
costs are it's more labor that's why i'm moving towards 3d printers because i want to do um i want to chat to you a little bit about community as well uh you know what are the failures of eco villages and what are the alternatives but i'm basically want to get into property development where i build walls with a printer and um put up obviously a, a, a beam uh, a beam like a ferro cement beam um, and then sculpt a vaulted roof off that. That's that's not my home. That's AMT picture from AMT 3D printers here. But they're amazing. Mm -hmm. It's very similar to Super Adobe. Super Adobe is 30 centimeters by 10 high. And the print head prints 3 centimeters by 1 centimeter. So it's literally 10 times um, you know, smaller. But it's the same additive technology. But uh, that's where I'm going. Because the building with Super Adobe is just so time uh, consuming. But I want to bring in rainbows into the home because here and uh, we're spending a lot of time indoors. Winters are cold. So, you know, I want to bring technology like rainbows using splitting sunlight. But in essence, combining a, a Chinese greenhouse, it's actually called the Chinese greenhouse and an airship or, or with, uh, you know, yeah, to create this uh, alternative sacred geometrical home. Th these are some of the projects um, that I've done already. That's in South Africa. That's a natural filter for the pool, 100,000 liters in a wall, because I had a flooding in my garden. I'll, I'll share with you a couple of videos that you can maybe share with your subscribers. But what I'm about is basically using curves. Curves are very, very strong. This river went up eight meters high, and my wall, you know, no problem. It was studded because my wall played with the water because it's the uh, uh, same shape as the water. And that's a, a, a eco village of design for 70 families, uh, which I think is a failure, as pretty as it is. It's 120 hectares, <laughs> market, market, airship hotel. Uh, these are little plots, one acre plots. And I'll, I'll maybe, you know, if we have the time, uh, uh, then I'll share that after you. But a little uh, stage for fair, um, like, uh, yeah, like celebrations and festivals and stuff. Um, there's a natural building school with open plots so people, so students can build uh, very similar to what you're talking about, just apply. But my dream is really to, this is not obviously mine, this is Eden Project in Cornwall. My dream is to take this into uh, a large scale um, greenhouses that can uh, provide warmth and, and sunlight and jungle in winter time. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's really amazing. I love, I mean, the work you've done is incredible. I love, I really am interested to, yeah, get more into the sacred geometry side of things. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I'm curious where kind of what got you started with, with all of this, like what's your, yeah. What's like the big driver behind it? Well, um, the big driver is the forest that I've been mowed down um and i know it's not just for heating needs so you know such as firewood but a lot of it is going into firewood they're burning the forest to heat homes and i just think that's ridiculous if we can heat our homes use at least 10 times less firewood by using laws of physics such as you know what airships do it's just a challenge to an airship is that we have overcast for two months of the year which entails the don't and uh and because it's really really cold so our mean temperature of the ground is like very cold like just about freezing maybe plus two celsius plus three celsius so these are the challenges that i've set myself so i'm developing a compost uh, um compost heater using jean Payne's composting method and uh the compost is uh behind uh yeah that's this is this is the design that i'm working on right now um that's my latest and this is what i'm going to be building this year so um basically uh combine there's my composter uh, it's behind the brown thing um yeah it's uh, got a greenhouse i've got uh, our cultural style that i've uh, decided to add um not, not mentioning the word <laughs> of what country i'm in because uh might get blocked but anyway so yeah <laughs> uh, it's obviously on the tire foundation uh tire foundations are fantastic especially uh for um, cold climates and high water tables 
and expansive clay soils. It allows the the home is you know relatively heavy, and that's all going to be printed in the future. But for now, as a first prototype, I'm doing this obviously um, with uh, Hyper Adobe. Hyper Adobe got no barbed wire. Super Adobe's got the barbed wire. So very cool windows, and uh, yeah, and it's going to have a sauna on the right here. Um, so oh, wow. oh, awesome. yeah but for Beautiful. your application well, there are simpler homes much simpler don't need to get so complex as i said that acreage pod went up in a week so we could play around with a few designs for your students that um if they want to come on board with us and then just have maybe a, a zoom call maybe we can have a brainstorming session or, or something we could definitely get them going with the design work yeah, yeah, for sure. And and something I really like about these also is that if someone wanted to start, they could even design their home, but execute it in phases. So I really like to break things up into phases sometimes so they could, you know, build one central room and then they could add on to that in the future as well, yeah. which I think is just an awesome way to start. We we really run on like a minimum viable product method. So we, we often don't know if things are going to work or not. Right. So we don't want to go expend all of our time and resources. And then, you know, then we if someone, for example, has a budget and then they spend all of their budget building their personal home. Um, instead of you know building out the rest of the property, this this way I, I think the phases really breaks it down into they they get this amazing uh, you know natural building that a lot of people are really after right now, and they can start small and they can live in it and start the lifestyle that they want while also you know allocating uh, budget elsewhere to be able to build out the rest of the project. So I think uh, that that Jamie, I, I, I love, love I love, I love the idea really of. I love the idea of not blowing all the money onto your personal home. I think once you start with something small and basic for a personal home, I love your strategy. And I've 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 burned myself hard because I've started applying all my money into my home and then the business wasn't developed. And that's why what led me out of the uh, bankruptcy, literally bankrupt and ran back. As soon as you bankrupt, you ran back to the city. It, end of story. If your vegetable garden is not developed and you ran out of money for food, you're going to go and find the money and you're going to get the first job and we don't want to get there. So I love your strategy. So exactly in my home design, the first room, which is this wooden, wooden vault, which um, I'm going to be sharing with your subscribers, but it's amazing wooden vault, like a yurt, but I've built it for a thousand dollars on materials. You won't believe it. Wow. The, yeah. The glass was so cheap. Um, Oh man, I, I, I just I just I, I have to show you a picture of this, but the glass I went for secondhand glass. So you gotta look at this like uh, you know your uh, relevant sites, um, you know that that sell secondhand, but it wasn't secondhand, it was actually brand new. So yeah, it was a wooden wooden lattice uh, vault and 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 I'll have a video with you for you guys and then um this was all made by hand. This was this was really I know it looks rough and obviously all of this foam will be covered, but to this point, this cost me a thousand dollars in material. It was a hundred bucks for wow. the glass and the door made myself and it's triple pane glass, triple pane, not like one glass It's triple pane. <laughs> so it's two air pockets. And uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was really, um, um, here's a picture inside. Um, Sorry, it's just taking a little, uh, here we go. Yeah, so, so you know, I that it. gets built first. This is you got, you got to build something first that, that, um, wow, you know, look that, at that. <laughs> that is yeah, so it's like cool. a yurt. So when you said to me $30,000 for a yurt, I'm like, shit, you, <laughs> you don't need to spend that. It was C yeah, grade and wood, which we sculpt, which we shaved off a little bit. It was just a chainsaw, so you don't even need to have uh, any electricity on the land. No electricity we had. It used no water, uh, so you don't need to have water on the land. And you can already get started. Um, sure, it's submerged. We didn't use an ounce of cement. Nothing. It was uh, We uh, used uh, natural um, stuff for the wooden logs, that those, those posts that are standing. Those posts, they, they kept the logs from going down. The logs are all dead. We just took what the forest gave us. We didn't kill any trees. 
which was really cool. We pulled it out. It was a four by four vehicle. Wow. Yeah. So like to yeah, because I mean, even with that, like I mean, we we mill all of our own wood on our property, and you know, for people to buy wood, a lot of the time it's actually cheaper to buy or finance uh, like a mill, your own mill, if the property has trees, and then mill it yourself. Because usually in the first go around of building materials, you would have paid off the mill already by going out and yeah. buying the lumber yeah. and then you get to keep it forever you get to keep it for life to to continue doing that so i think that wow i love that i think that's super amazing and like back to the thirty thousand dollar year you could build 30 of what you just showed me and, through and, workshop and, style and through and they're workshop actually, yeah, through workshops. Yeah, that's it. We, we actually have uh, training inside of our program um, on uh, like a full playbook on how we've done that before on how we've hosted workshops to be able to, um, you know, get get help and also to work with experts. So there's kind of a two two plays to being able to host workshops. One is the labor side, like you mentioned, which helps like reduce cost and people love it. They really love it. It's great community builders and stuff. It's so amazing. Like lifelong friends from every time we host anything. And then on the other side, uh, you also don't need like people sometimes think that they need to be like the leader of the workshop because they're, you know, hosting it and whatnot. But um we actually we actually haven't done well we do now but for our first two years we didn't do that we actually just uh like hired somebody to come in who was an expert in their field like such as yourself for example so like we could pay you you know a few thousand dollars potentially to come out for a weekend and help host a workshop and teach us um, so you're actually leading it. And then we use the ticket prices to cover that cost. So then it's a win-win for everybody. Um, mm -hmm. And we get to learn directly from an expert such as yourself. So yeah, we we uh, we help our clients, you know, work with that strategy as well. Um, but, you know, I was thinking about this, like it's, it's very... Um, it's very like Hobbit home kind of style. And a lot of people really love that style. And we've looked into it and there's some kits out there that you can buy. One is called Green Magic Homes. I don't know if you're familiar with them. Um, and they, they're they like, um, they look like plastic kind of kits. And oh they yeah, come, yeah, yeah, they, and they, 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 they clip them together. together. And they yeah. build like a round kind of thing. But the prices on those are crazy. So like if you if you want one of those, it ends up being like, 35,000 for their most basic smallest model about the same size as what you just showed me plus you need to go and in order to order the kit you either need to fly down and pay for a workshop to learn about how to do it all or you need to hire a contractor to come and build it which probably would cost you another $30,000 yeah. so uh I like what I think what you're offering here is is super amazing and right I like well, as soon as you showed showed me that I want to do that now I want to do that this year well there'll be a video that I'll send to you uh from Vimeo that actually shares just a little bit of uh what this whole training is all about we, we actually teach you how to build three methods the one in Brazil uh, that we build that sacred geometrical hyper adobe home which has also got a vault uh ferro cement vault so you'll learn the hyper adobe the the do vault building um with cement with uh ferro cement and with this uh wooden technique yeah the wooden lattice technique uh it is so strong it can take ten thousand kilograms per square meter 10 tons of weight per square wow. meter per three by three foot so because of the, the compression strength and another beauty about wood, which was all sea grade, it was rough with the pieces and it was even had pieces of bark that was shaved off. That why, that's why we got it at such a good price. You'd understand it because you milled your own wood. You know, if you, you know, you don't always get it perfect. The edges got a bit of bark off and you got to clean that off because the bark obviously rots first. So two people, one month, and the whole thing is standing as you see it. About six hours a day, wow. not even killing yourself, not killing yourself. Two people, six, six hours a day, uh, 30 days. Yeah, no weekends, <laughs> but you'll have it up. Wow. You have it up. And and the other thing uh, you said. So Hobbit really Hobbit. 20 days. Yeah. So, yeah. so really just 20 days of work, six hours then, a day, which if you work eight, that would probably bring it, that would bring it down to 15 days. So you could build where it is in almost two weeks with two people. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 wow. and that's uh, and that we shaved our own 
trees, we cleaned the trees, the bark off, we got the sea grade wood that we had to clean off all the edges and stuff. So it was a lot of cleaning. Obviously, you get the yeah. attachment to a chainsaw, which I bought, which is like a little drum that just pulls all that bark off, which is great. Um, yeah. And another thing is that uh, minus outside, you were mentioning minus 10, cold, minus 15, you know, the ground temperature is plus five Celsius. So, you know, you're already 15, 20 degrees warmer then, so you will not freeze. If you ran out of firewood, worst case scenario, because you're in the earth, you will not freeze. The temperature is always positive. Um, yeah, so that's really yeah. cool. And and how much, uh, so how much would you stack on top of it, like stack earth and whatnot on top of it for like insulation factor? We used a foam, uh, about, I don't know, one centimeter foam, half an inch foam with um, reflector, two layers comes on a roll, wasn't much, and a foot of earth with a clay lock. The clay uh, lock is the one that if you don't use it, clay lock is basically clay and straw mixed together and like the slurry putty. And that, that locks it and basically doesn't, when you put the grass, which is all covered by grass, yeah, like the hobbit home. When you put the grass turfs, yeah. not like this, you put the grass turfs like this. Um, they don't right. slide down because the clay lock that that straw and clay they just creates you know otherwise the um, uh, the waterproofing gets pulled and the waterproofing is that black stuff with the gas torch that you burn and that, that you know melts together so it's so low tech and I teach the whole method I'm actually uh, started the course just recently so we're welcoming all your students and all your subscribers to come on board um, because it's really cool training. Um, we got so, so far 80 people and um, I send a lesson during the week, edited, uh, completed lesson. And then on the weekend, we have a Q&A live Zoom call. So any, you've got a similar situation. Any questions we get answered, we answer. So it's all good. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I totally plan on being a part of it as well. I, I love what, you know, what you're doing. And I totally plan to execute that on our land as well. And um, I like that model too. Uh, people really like that personal support where they're able to come and ask questions and whatnot. So I, th I think that's really great. Um, what one question I had was just around around like permits and zoning and stuff. I know that like my first thought it, on that one is is uh, like there's there's usually a hundred square foot rule with most zoning where if it's a hundred square foot or less, then there's no permit needed for a structure. Um, and sometimes that's more. So I've seen it in certain zonings and like counties and provinces and whatnot uh, to be as high as like 400 square feet, sometimes even five. Um, but most commonly it's around a hundred. So I know that there's that method, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm curious about any other method that you've used to like get any permits and stuff for this stuff, or if you're just flying under the radar with it. Well Okay, so it's a very good question because also most of my students are from America and they have the same issue. So th this is, uh, this. first of all, um, 100 square foot, uh, you can do a dream catcher net. Make them a little higher. Make a dream catcher net. It's like my own strategy, uh, which I showed so you. So you can climb sphere. up the middle and like hang out. Yeah, up there. yes. So you That's have awesome. another 100 square foot, but that doesn't, cover as floor space because it's a net <laughs> it's a dream catch in the sky <laughs> no full on <laughs> really game that's the first thing and the second thing is i'm going to try and share it now um for my telegram channel we've got a really cool warm group on telegram but you'd think the other thing i researched is that the um, um greenhouse has to be a certain distance away i think it is nine feet away from the house so then you know we start to think but then how does the whole earthship strategy and heating and, and and that whole thing how does it work and um i've actually developed uh, something for one of my clients actually it was a yurt that he was doing and the greenhouse was a separate uh, uh thing altogether let me try and find it because basically you can pull the green the hot air out of a greenhouse and direct it into um this home which uh which which allows you to tap into the warmth that the greenhouse produces insane amount of warmth but it doesn't have to be right next to it obviously the pipes have to be insulated and, and so on but 
Uh, here's a little uh, uh, quick. Uh, I'll let me just hold on. Okay, let me just share. Because this is very cool. Because this will give students, um, you know, your students and your subscribers, um, you know, belief that the, the this can be done without actually. Um, can you see this little video, like like with the spiral? Yeah. Okay. So basically, what you're seeing is this little standard greenhouse. Okay. And I've made another little polycarbonate thing at the bottom. And if you can see, there is these orange pipes that stick out from, uh, from this bottom end. And they come in and they go into this floor under the yurt and they warm up the mass. It's like a clay floor, natural floor. And then there is an mm -hmm. oven, oven inside the greenhouse, which uh, also pulls the heat. And that goes into uh, like a cob uh, couch like a rocket stove type of type of couch that actually has a pipe so it's two different systems so you know not to go into detail but just to show you how you can creatively pull the heat from um you know from uh, an, a separate building so another thing i have to mention for the codes this whole thing is covered by the earth so when we're looking at the group how they spot these buildings and i'm not saying legal or illegal I'm saying how they spot these buildings is this, it was green pasture land and suddenly something appears and, you know, they can see it. And suddenly there's questions. And if you haven't registered anything, it's like, what is that thing? But because your thing is a hobbit home and it's covered by grass, you literally don't spot, they don't, they don't see it. It was a pasture land before and it was a pasture land now. And for somebody to drive out and to go, what's what's on your land? You know what I mean? You can be very clever about it. So we already discussed, you've got a 200 square foot on a 100 square foot of, you know, plot. You've got it completely covered. You've got a greenhouse that they see. They just, they look at that greenhouse. Ah, it's just a greenhouse. But that greenhouse is actually pumping heat into a mass. So, you know, heating up your home. So these are some of the strategies that I thought of. That we should get or can get around yeah I have, I have a couple more to add um one thing uh back to for, for one we actually have an architect that is that specializes in uh, earth ships so he gets earth ships like fully permitted in in uh in like our province in north america so uh like i mean it's definitely doable it really is you just need to find somebody specialized in that and we'll link our clients i'm happy to you know give referrals to your clients as well um, for people that are interested in this type of building and want specific permits because that's what he specializes in he's super passionate about it he's done a he was an architect for a long time and he ended up going down and um architect and engineer i believe and he ended up going down to mexico and like learning everything about earth ships and then bringing that back here and figured out a way to actually build them to code and get them permitted and whatnot so that's pretty amazing um so yeah we can link everybody that another cool option is, is like we talked about before is is the 100 square foot rule turning it in, like leaving some height and turning it into 200 square feet and actually building multiple and having breezeways that connect them so then you can then you know if they ever come around you're just like well it's a bunch of hundred square foot dwellings so then they can't say anything so something i can uh, add uh jamie something i can add for the breezeways in my stretch fabric days we worked with this super strong um material that's for outdoor nomadic tents i'm sure you came across in festivals and stuff it doesn't have as much yeah. stretch that stuff can take a hundred mile wind per hour and you could link structures with that. And it's as good as, uh, you know, obviously, you know, you can't keep it warm in winter, but as like, a, you know, snowproof and on all of that wind and rain, it's really cool tenting material. Um, I'd highly recommend it for yeah, glamping you and your kind of. And, and it's it's classified as a tent structure so therefore that it's temporary and therefore you don't need permits for it either in most places so i think that's a really good option because you could actually use that to have a fully enclosed large hallway in between each of these units yeah. and do multiple layers of it to help with like the insulation factor and whatnot too 
Um, yeah, exactly. I think, it's, uh, so, I think it's amazing. So basically, where we're we going with this, if we do have uh, the system that we have to conform to, let's say, we already, we just spoke with you how we can create, turn a 100 foot into a 200 footer by just having this tight net out of a rope that made as a second floor. So you have 200 square foot warm space to sleep as office. You've got a big window because you remember the arch doesn't have, can have a whole wall open. So it's all glass. Um, yeah, like, uh, yeah. It's just a little sketch from front view. You know, so you have this whole glass door. Uh, that's actually that, that home. Uh, you'd edge this with plywood. Um, but anyway, so 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 you have a nice big table that that looks out. I'll send you a video. You can you know over edit over this uh, footage. But we don't have to have a five hundred square foot home that's all warm and all good. Yeah, sure, part tent, cool outdoor kitchen for summer. Why not winter time? Hey, you tuck in. You're a bit cozier. You know why need to have a 500 square foot all year round you know so we got to work with it i love your idea of composting human your toilets brilliant wood shavings no smell i've used human your toilets i've actually got a video on youtube about human your toilets and i make them with curves it's all curvy plywood with a jigsaw love it um obviously i'm going for you know the nice flushing toilet because uh, people prefer it uh, Earthship style, but even that we're using um, big tires, tire uh, bus tires. I'm sure you've seen it. Five bus tires, a little ferro cement dome above them. Then you pour a flat slab, and the four inch pipe goes straight down. The toilet is right above this whole thing. Also, mm -hmm. super. I, I'm. I'm. That's what I think brought me resonated with your messages. It's low tech methods to get the economic model flowing. Because once the economic model is flowing, then with that extra income, part you reinvest and part you can finish your home. But you, we need something that we can move in and have a roof over our head in the coldest of climates. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, something that comes to mind there for me is, is a, a huge part of our kind of economic drivers is what we call wow factor and wow factor works to attract anyone so wow factor could be something man-made such as you know a geodesic dome or any of the amazing natural building stuff that you're offering it could be a sauna it could be you know whatever it could also be natural it could be a mountain with a good view it could be a river um, or a creek or whatever it might be um, or it could be something that is like a concept right? Like it could be like, even what you're doing here is a concept. If someone built their property out using all natural building stuff and, and all of this like sacred uh, geometry, I, I like that's a concept that people be really attracted to being a part of. Um, so with that, it, it attracts everything. It, it attracts guests. If you're doing any short-term rentals, it attracts, you know, clients, if you're doing any retreats or if you're doing any workshops, um, it attracts mm -hmm. volunteers for, you know, help with labor. Uh, it attracts good team members who just want to be a part of the project. It attracts investors. It attracts all, all sorts of things. So it is really like, instead of going out and doing a bunch of marketing and whatnot to try to like get people in, the wow factors and the uniqueness of what you're doing naturally attracts aligned people that want to come be a part of what you're doing. And, and just you set it up once and then it just runs and it, it, it basically is the heartbeat of your economic generator of your income for years to come. Um, and it makes everything easier and, and more fun in the process because, you know, who wants to just, yeah. you know, build lame stuff? <laughs> well, um, talking about the wow factor, very important that you mentioned that for, for me in my climate, November, December, January, very dark, overcast, heavy, dark, gray skies. Sun comes up at 10 a.m., 4 o'clock, it sets. We're really we're 60 degrees north. So... A wow factor for me would be to create a sunny Bali jungle <laughs> for winter time and some ice sculptures outside with my stretch fabric, which I can spray with water and make them into ice sculptures, oh, wow. you know, which, which would be like really cool. So, um, yeah, wow factor is very important because, you know, people need something different. People need something alternative. 
Um, and also one thing I have to mention, uh, because going with the building code regulations, the water becomes a problem. As soon as you start putting plumbing, it's tricky. So some of the strategies that can be applied is uh, some guys obviously hide the plumbing in just below the floor. And when the inspector is gone, you know, crack it open and launch your toilet or wherever it need be. The other thing is wetland in this in in the do, in the um, these homes there's a greenhouse you can have a shower made just above the wetland and that's you know somewhere is a hidden bulb that 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 waterfall that forever waterfall that's flowing you know circulating and the water goes through the wetland gets clean through a biochar filter which we teach and goes back over it's a forever shower and you just have a valve somewhere that just taps into in the the hot water from your solar geyser or your uh, uh, masonry oven or wherever, and suddenly your waterfall becomes a hot waterfall that you're just standing above the wetland, you're washing yourself. So inspectors are like, what do you mean, what shower? <laughs> it's a freaking water feature. It's constantly going, but you just have a hidden valve that taps in the heat when you need it. So uh, no wow. plumbing. You are, you are, you know how the Earthship Wetlanders, you know, you, you can you, go to gravel and stuff. So you put a little wooden plate and you, the shower goes right, boom, down. And <laughs> well, I love that. And it feels so organic and natural for, you know, a human to to do that. I, yeah, I, I love that. I think that's amazing. And yeah, that's also pretty common practice with just like having like doing bare bones, have an inspector come in, they approve it, they leave, and then you add whatever the heck you want kind of thing. Like I grew up in construction and, you know, people do that all the time. They'll build a coach house or they'll build a suite into their uh, barn or whatever it is. And they'll have them inspect it when it's bare bones and then they leave and then they turn the whole thing and do everything else, you know, into a suite. That's, you know, for, for full living and full kitchen and all the rest. So yeah, that's su super common in the kind of construction industry with permitting and everything as well. So yeah, that makes total sense. Yeah, I think, I think we should, and, and, we, we should right. actually split our interview and um, maybe just do a wrap up. I think we should do a follow-up interview as well. I think there's so much to share. I haven't even asked any of the questions that I want to do, but I think we should keep it like nice and dense for the people and interesting, and then we can have a repetition. But go for it. What did you sure, want to say? Yeah. yeah um, well, I was just going to say, going back to like the having like multiple, like a couple hundred square foot dwellings that are connected by breezeways and stuff um, and coming back to like the seasonality of that, like even with like we we're having tiny homes built right now and we are planning on building a large covered outdoor area that we can, you know, put a wood stove in and heat for a couple hours when we're using it in the winter and stuff. So in some seasons, it's we really want it to be integrated with nature. So in some seasons, will be more outside like a lot of the time and making that space really beautiful um, but then in other seasons like you mentioned like in winter we're just going to be kind of retreating and really like living our lifestyle in a way that's in alignment with those seasons and just cozying up and sitting next to the fire and having more sleep and more downtime and whatever winter is really calling us to do yeah. for our bodies and, and minds so um, yeah, I think I think it's just really that's a part of it. That's a part of the experience. It's a part of the lifestyle. Uh, that's a part of living in alignment with nature yeah. as well. It's like almost a, mess, a, a visual. I like to that. Yeah. Like summer, you grow, your house grows. You have got outdoor kitchen, outdoor activities, beautiful, and then you shrink in, and you need much less space, much less space to heat. Uh, you know, mm. what's the point of building a five hundred square footer if it'll be like? forever heating this whole space up trying to get it from minus 20 to plus 20 yeah, yeah yeah i love that but yeah that sounds good to me what i think would be cool is i, I we could send this to our audience and then just ask them for any questions that they have um yeah. and then uh and then we can we can come back and and talk about all their questions on the next one 